Number 25, a 1.2 kilogram ball drops vertically on a floor hitting with a speed of 25 meters per second. It rebounds with an initial speed of 10 meters per second. Letter A, what impulse acts on the ball during the contact? Letter B, if the ball is in contact with the floor for 0.02 seconds, what is the magnitude of the average force on the floor from the ball? Okay, so this is the floor over here. So let's say that upwards is our y direction. And initially, the ball is going in this direction. And after it hits the, the floor, it's going upwards. So initially, our initial velocity is equal to 25 in the j direction. However, it is negative because it's pointing downwards. And we choose that upwards is positive. And our final velocity is equal to 10 in the j direction meters per second. Okay, we want to find the impulse that acts on the ball. And we know that the impulse is equal to the change in the momentum. So if we find the change in the momentum, we can find the impulse. The change in the momentum is equal to mass times the change in the, the velocity. So this is equal to mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So this is equal to 1.2 times 10 in the j direction plus 25 in the j direction. And this is equal 1.2 times 35 in the j direction. And this is equal to 42 kilograms meter per second in the j direction. So this is our impulse. If you want the magnitude of the impulse, just take the absolute value of this vector, which is 42 kilograms meter per second. Okay, so that's the answer of letter A. Letter B, if the ball is in contact with the floor for 0.02 seconds, what is the magnitude of the average force on the floor from the ball. So the impulse is equal to the average force times delta t. So if you want to find the average force, we, we just have to isolate it. So the average force is equal to the impulse divided by delta t. So this is equal to 42 in the j direction over 0.02. And this gives us 2.1 times 10 to the third in the j direction, newtons. And that's pretty much it. You can see that it points upwards, of course, because the, well, let's think a little bit. The magnitude of the average force on the floor from the ball. So the force, the force of the ball on the floor points downwards and this is its magnitude and using Newton's third law this is the force from the floor to the ball it points upwards so the floor makes a force on the ball upwards and the ball makes a force on the floor downwards but it doesn't matter because it wants the magnitude and not the direction of the force